Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome to Open Heavens Devotional Review for today. Tuesday, the 13th of February, 2024. I'm carrying the magic of Open Heavens is authored by that in the Lord, Pastor E.A. Adeboye, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Open Heavens is a guide to a close fellowship with God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for another new word that you have sent to us. We pray that you will refresh us through your word. You will expand your, your word in our lives through your words and give us grace to be doers, not just hearers only. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The topic for today is when God beckons on you. When God beckons on you. Our memory verse is taken from the book of 1 Samuel 3 verse 4. That the Lord called Samuel and he answered, here I am. That the Lord God, the Lord called Samuel and he answered, here I am. Our Bible reading is taken from the book of Matthew 11 verse 28 to 30. Come to me, all ye who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The message. From today's Bible reading, we see that when God beckons for you, it is an invitation to rest. There is a difference between hard labor and other types of work. God expects you to work. Second Thessalonians 3 verse 10 says that if you don't work, you are not to eat. However, laborers, especially those who labor at menial jobs, work from sunrise and sundown. At the end of the day, they earn just enough money to keep body and soul together. I decree that you will no longer struggle before you eat in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the reasons you are reading this now is because God is beckoning on you. When he declares he is, when he beckons, he's saying destiny is calling you. In Exodus 3, 1 to 10, Moses was at the backside of the desert when he suddenly saw a bush that was burning but was not consumed. He said, I will turn aside and see. That was a beckoning and by the time he responded, God told him that this, that his days of staying in the wilderness were over and it was now time to fulfill his destiny. In Mark 3, 13-15, Jesus went to the top of a mountain and beckoned to those he destined. And they came unto him, those people except Judas Iscariot, later became the apostles we know today. The first thing you have to do when he beckons is to take up his yoke. In other words, make his desire your desire and pursue the things he pursue. When you think of the greatest thing that God pursues, it is souls. If you really want to fulfill your destiny, you will take up the yoke of winning souls and you will begin to see how he arranges things for you to fulfill your destiny. My major pursuit was to become the youngest vice chancellor in Africa. But God beckoned on me and I took up his role of winning souls. That is how I got to fulfill my destiny. And now vice chancellors call me daddy. You have no idea what your true destiny is until you start winning souls and doing the work of God. Just in case you think soul winning is only for evangelists and pastors, please study Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Carefully, carefully, all followers of Jesus Christ are commissioned to make disciples of all nations. And this includes you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The topic once more is when God beckons on you, like we've been made to understand. That any time God beckons on you, it is an invitation to rest. In the Bible reading we read today, it says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. You see, it's calling people so that it can give rest unto them. And also, whenever God beckons, it's an invitation to the fulfillment of your destiny. 
for every one of us god created us for for his own purpose he has created you for a purpose and you know what that purpose he has created you for is the best purpose for your life anything outside it it will be counterproductive you know the person that if you know is just like a manufacturer who manufactured a particular car if that car is now not being used for the purpose of of the purpose at which that manufacturer has designed the car and is being used for something else is it that that car will be working you know will, will be uh, acting in a counterproductive manner or in a or maybe underutilized you know because god has created you he has deposited a lot of things in you for what that very purpose that he created you for in the life of samuel he had deposited some skills in him that will enable him to fulfill purpose for him so therefore for every one of us at every one point or the other god beckons on us and i pray that as he beckons the grace to obey him the lord will give unto us in the name of jesus christ amen we saw the account of moses who was at the back side you know of the desert and god beckoned on him and when god beckoned on him he answered the call he responded and that led to the fulfillment of his destiny up until that moment he was not fulfilling what the destiny the purpose god had created him for you know he was on the road to it until god beckoned on him and that activated the purpose of god for his life as you and i we we, we as god beckons on us and we listen to we respond to his call his purpose for our lives will be activated in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We also saw praise the Lord. We also saw the apostles. Jesus Christ beckoned on them. He called them at different intervals and eventually they became the apostles, you know, in the Bible that we all speak about because they were able to fulfill purpose. There was one of them that he said, "I will make you fishers of men if you follow me." He beckoned on him and he obeyed him. And eventually, he became indeed fishers of men. Praise the Lord, Hallelujah! What, whenever He beckons on us, what must we do? We must take up His yoke, like He said in the Bible reading. He said, "Take my yoke upon you and learn from me." And we must take up His yoke, and taking up His yoke is ensuring that we make His desire our desire. If somebody calls you into His house and say, "Come and live with me," what happens? You have to work according to what they do in that house. If they wake up six o'clock, it means that automatically you must wake up six o'clock. If they wake up early, you must do that. If early in the morning they come, they do morning devotion, you must be part of it because he has called you to come and be part of him. So and when God beckons on us, what he's telling us is that I am calling you. I want you to be or you know to, to come to me. And everything he likes must be our own life. His dislike must be our own dislike whatever he's pursuing must also be what he we pursue and that is what that bible reading he says take up my yoke upon you make my desire your desire make my pursue your pursue and we know that one of the greatest desires of god in short the greatest is to win souls is harvesting of souls and you know like a dad in the lord has said that harvesting of souls is not restricted to pastors it's not restricted to evangelists every child of god it is a mandate from every child of god so in fact once immediately you give your life to christ god is already beckoning on you of course there might be some special beckoning even after he has beckoned for a dad in the lord immediately he gave his life to christ he was already working for god until god decided that see I am calling you even 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 into my inner chamber you know and he yielded to that call rather than his purpose rather than his heart desires that he wanted to become the youngest VC in Africa he had to align with the purpose of the Lord for his life but adventure you also have some mindset God might be beckoning on you and telling you that no it is not what you are doing that I want you to do it is I want something else for you you better take it because that is what he had created you for you are designed every part of your body has been wired the skills deposited in you 
was deposited so that you can fulfill that purpose that is the purpose of the Lord for you. God's purpose for our life is the best that we can ever get. And I pray that the Lord will open our eyes and give us understanding in the name of Jesus. And as he beckons, we will hear him. For Samuel, when God beckoned, he did not even understand until Eli told him what to do. I pray that you, when you hear the voice of the Lord beckoning at you, you will understand. You will hear him. You will not be deaf towards it. And you will not say, no, I am not doing. The grace to follow him and say, here I am, send me. The Lord will give unto you and I in the name of Jesus. And that his greatest desire of souls. The grace to use everything that he has given unto us. To win, to harvest souls for him. The Lord will give unto us in Jesus. name. Amen. But adventure, you know, like we have been told, that is not restricted to pastors. It's not restricted to ministers. That position that God has given unto you, he wants, he wants to be the center of it. In that business that you are succeeding, he wants you to use those, that opportunity, that influence that he has given unto you, he wants to be in the center of it. He wants his name to be glorified in it. I listened to a woman, of, a woman who became the chairman of a particular bank. She said immediately she became the chairman of that bank. You know, she went into her office and she said, God, this chair, it is not my own. It is yours. That you have only made me, you know, a representative for you in that place. That you should use it for your glory. And that's what how God wants us to do. That every position he has given unto us. Maybe you are a bank manager. Maybe you are a market woman that you are selling things. Maybe you are a trader, you know. Maybe you, you, know, maybe you are even just hawking something. In it all, in everything. He wants to be the center of it. And he wants you to fulfill his mandate of winning souls around it. Don't say, oh, it's because I work in a corporate organization. So that's why I'm not winning souls. You can impact lives. You can tell people about Jesus. People can see God in you. You can testify of the goodness of the Lord and draw men closer to you. People, people use the, even the, the, trans, the means of their transportation to win souls. So nothing should restrict us. And for every child of God, there's already automatically a beckoning of God in our lives. I pray that God will give us even greater understanding. And as we receive special beckoning, that, that for that uh, to do some specific and some some you know some very specified assignment unto the Lord. I pray that the Lord will help us to listen to Him and to say, Here I am, send me. And he will empower us to be impactful for that assignment in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The prayer, prayer point. Father, like David, let the zeal of your house consume me so I can fulfill destiny in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being part of the review for today. God bless you. Amen. <music>